This program is brought to you by the Kentucky Small Business Development Center in Louisville. We provide the professional expertise, tools, and resources to help you succeed. To connect with a business coach, call 502-625-0123 or email svdcinfo at uky.edu. Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of Toolkit Tuesday. My name is Ann Shadel and I am a business coach in the Louisville Center for the Kentucky Small Business Development Center. And I am here to introduce our presenter for, for today, which is somebody that I know well and I'm excited to share about with all of you. Um, Jamie Johnson is one of the coaches in our network. Um, she's been with us for, for quite a while now and does some really good work um, out of Owensboro. And she also has been a blogger for many years um, grew from kind of just jumping into it and then really sort of took off and has lots of really good expertise to, to share with all of you today. So Jamie, I will let you pop on here. Um, and just a special thank you to Janet Flaw, our behind the scenes um, magic makers who, who makes all this possible here. So um, so yeah, everybody tip their hats to, to Janet in your respective Zoom rooms. Um, so yeah, Jamie, why don't you come on and I will let you Take it from here and then, oh, before I give you the mic, um, I'll stop myself, just two sort of housekeeping notes. Feel free to put um, questions in the chat throughout the presentation here, meant to be interactive. So we will definitely go and hit on all those questions at the end of the presentation. And then we will also send a survey out um, just after the presentation is finished and would really appreciate your all's feedback. Um, we're always looking to improve how we do these, whether it's the topics themselves or the way the information is shared. Um, we really appreciate your all feedback, so please be on the lookout for that. And then definitely, you know, put some questions in the chat and put your name in the chat. Tell us where you're from. Say hello. And thank you all for being with us today. So I'll let you take it away, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. Thank you, Janet, for putting this together. I'm excited to talk to you all today about blogging. So let me just share my screen. Okay, awesome. So today we are going to talk about the top 10 content tips for your business blog. Um, I think they already went over this, but I do want to say a shout out to the Greater Owensboro Economic Development Corporation. Um, they are my sponsor and they make this job possible. So thanks to them. Um, a little bit about me. Um, as Ann said, I am the center director for the Small Business Development Center in Owensboro, and I am a content writer and former parenting blogger. Um, so yeah, I'm a former mom blogger that has a really negative <laughs> connotation to it. But um, yeah, I started a mom blogger, but I was a cool, I was a cool mom blogger. Um, just to give you a little background, here's kind of how my um, background with content started. Um, I used to post stuff on Facebook about my kids when they were younger um, and a little bit about, I guess you could say, my uh, relaxed parenting style. Um, and I would include hashtag mom fell at the end. Um, and people thought it was like really funny. And I guess like hashtags were cool at that time. They probably weren't cool, but I thought they were cool. Um, so someone mentioned to me one day that they thought I should start a blog. Um, so I was like, you know what? Why not? I'm going to do this. I have a full-time job and an 18 month old and a three-year-old, but I'm going to start blogging too. Um, so in one day I bought my domain name built my site, wrote a post and published it. Um, I posted about it on, I think my Facebook page and then went back to my kids. I thought that like my mom might read it or like one of my friends. Um, I did like bed, bath time, all of that fun stuff. Um, and I went back to Facebook and found that it had like a couple hundred shares and like, I don't know, 700 likes or something like that. Um, so I was like, okay, um, this is cool. Like people actually like what I'm writing. Um, and I liked doing the actual writing. So I decided to continue on, um, three posts later, I received an email from an editor at the Huffington post, 
um, that saw my post and asked if I would become a contributor. Um, the post that they emailed me about actually ended up being my first, I guess you would call viral post. Um, I continued to blog religiously once a week for about three and a half years. Um, I had a couple more posts go viral. I've had my articles published on actual news channels. I've been on like ABC, The Today Show, Good Morning America, um, Pop Sugar, BuzzFeed, and then like some parenting sites like Scary Mommy, Motherly, and all of those. Um, I had a lot of success as a mom blogger, and I've had some really cool things happen. Um, but now my older son can read. He's seven. Um, and I didn't want him to have to like look back on stuff that I wrote about him and be embarrassed. Um, so I decided to retire the blog. Um, I haven't posted anything on the actual blog in over a year. There's still probably hundreds of posts on there. Um, but I still get regular traffic to my site because I have good SEO and I have some good backlinks, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Um, so actually, because of my blogging, I ended up getting a like part-time gig as a content writer for a large storage company. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that later too. So today we're gonna talk about why you need a business blog, um, some important numbers regarding business blogs, the top 10 content ideas, plus three bonus tips because I named this presentation before I'd written all of the tips out and I had more than 10. So, um, and my contact information, if you have um, a business blog and you have questions or you wanna get one started, feel free to reach out to me. I would be happy to help. Okay, so why do you need a business blog? I know a business blog sounds kind of boring, um, but having a business blog is really important and it can be really fun, um, but it gives your company a voice and makes them more approachable. Um, people want to know about your company and what your company stands for and the people behind the company um, and why you do what you do and you know why you're doing what you love full time. Um, they like to see your face. They like to see the face of your employees. I mean, this is all information that you can give them to a blog. It kind of makes them feel like they're part of the team. Um, it gets you some really loyal followers. Um, and I feel like they're also more likely to come into like a brick and mortar store if you have one of those, um, because they're a little more familiar with what to expect. Um, a business blog drives, drives traffic through search engine optimization. Um, SEO, I know is kind of like a buzzword sometimes, but pretty much it's the use of keywords on your page along with a few other things like how well it's organized um, and a couple other things. We won't get into all of that today, but um, these keywords are scraped by Google and other search engines. So the better your SEO, like the more keywords that you have on your site, the more likely you are to appear higher in your Google searches. So the more pages you have with those keywords, the more chances you have um, to go up on your Google rankings when people search for something related to your business. You also need a blog to engage current and potential customers. Um, if they're truly interested in what you have to offer and you offer them useful information on your blog, um, they will come back to read it. You know, you already have people that have purchased from you or are looking at purchasing from you. So they're obviously into what you do. Um, so why not provide them some more valuable information um, about what they're interested in? So just some numbers that are, you know, show how important it is to have a business blog. Um, I guess I wouldn't say how important it is to have a business blog. Like if you're a one man show and you are working like 90 hours a week, just trying to get by, like you're okay without having a business blog. But if you do have a business blog and you can block off that time, you need to go ahead and do it. 77% um, of internet users read blogs. A lot of the time when you search for something on Google and you have all these results pop up, a lot of those are coming from blogs. They're not always coming from the content on the web page. 86% um, of content marketers use blogs as part of their marketing strategy. Um, that's a lot of content marketers and I feel like everyone's a content marketer now. So that's a lot of people, um, but pretty much 
Blogging will drive your traffic, which brings more customers onto your site, which equals more sales, which equals more revenue. Um, so all in all, it's going to end up helping your bottom line if you do it the right way, which we'll talk about. 91% um, of business to business marketers use a blog. And then organizations that blog actively increase their ability to generate leads by 126%. So actively is kind of the key word here. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, good is also a key word um, because we want your content to, you know, you want to have a good business blog. You have to show up with good content um, and be committed to the blog and post weekly um, so that people can receive the updated information when they come to your blog. So let's talk about the content tips for your business blog. Tip number one, which has also a few other tips along with it, I've learned a lot over the last five years. And these are just some of the tips that I've learned um, from writing myself, from writing for editors for different news stations. Um, I've really gotten a lot of good feedback from them and learned a lot about what makes a good blog post. Um, at the beginning, you want to start with a post that's between 500 and 700 words. This is like the standard, um, amount of words that you use for a blog. It's kind of like enough for people to read, but not too much that it loses their interest. Um, there is some research, which you might've seen, that shows people read blogs, are more likely to read blogs that are 3,000 words or more. 3,000 words is a huge, huge blog post. You do not need to worry about writing 3,000 word blog posts when you're just starting out. Um, that is like a research paper. Um, so if that's something that you can do later on after you've accumulated some blog posts on your blog, then go ahead and write those 3000 word posts. Um, but from someone that does this as a job, it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of research to do that. Um, and if this is something that you're interested in possibly, but you don't know if you're gonna be able to find the time to do it, um, there are a lot of contract content writers, um, people that you can just ask to help write your blog post. Um, make sure you're writing on the level of an eighth to 10th grader. This is the same level that newspapers are written on. Um, also for your industry, make sure you use enough like industry jargon that it sounds like you know what you're doing, um, but don't go too into the trenches. You don't want to like turn people off um, if they don't really understand what they're reading. Um, use repetition to catch their attention. Um, in a blog, you can write it in any format that you like. Like this is your blog, you do what you want on it. Um, so you could have the first paragraph or the first sentence of every paragraph be this, I write for a storage place. So this is the first thing that pops in my head. This uh, storage cabinet is the best because um, it's mobile and then write about it being mobile. And then next paragraph, this storage cabinet is the best because you know, whatever else is awesome about like storage and filing cabinets. Um, so that really catches their attention if you use the same thing over and over again. And don't post anything without rereading and checking for spelling and grammatical errors. That's like a huge thing that drives me crazy if I'm reading a blog and I see like a misspelled word, a more missing word. Um, you can use a website, something like uh, Grammarly.com. It's a free site that you can post your blog post in there um, and it'll say, it'll pick up on any spelling or grammatical errors for you. It's free to use. They also offer a premium version. Um, I do use that because of how much I do write. Um, it's worth it for me. So it, it just depends on how much you're writing if you wanna get the premium version. So tip number two, okay, people love lists. So stick to lists, well, you don't always have to do a list, but stick to list or I shouldn't say and, stick to list or short paragraphs with headings. Um, so when it comes to lists, like I know I have read like the top 10 boy bands of 2000 and where they are now, like people, it's all over like pop culture stuff. 
lists are great. People love them. Just use as many as you can. Um, I've also found that posts with lists for me do exponentially better and that they were picked up by more syndicated networks as well. Um, what I've also learned is people are lazy and a lot of times they will look at the title of a blog post if it interests them. They will look at the headings. That's why you need to have all of the headings. Um, and then they'll look at any of the pictures. So explain as much as you can um, in short paragraphs with headings as well. Um, add as many photos as you can without going overboard. You know, you could have like staggered photos with paragraph next to each one, um, but don't put like 12 massive photos and then like a paragraph of text. Um, as many as um, look appropriate. You also want to make sure that like the layout of your blog is that it's nice, that it's, you know, everything's in line. Um, there are a lot of different templates that you can use and things like that. Um, so it's good to be kind of symmetrical with the photos and the text too. Um, and make sure that when you add a photo to a blog, that you are naming the photo, the file. Like we don't want any image 967842s. We want like um, brand name um, filing cabinet. And then you write in the description, this brand name filing cabinet is the hottest filing cabinet of 2022 or something like that. That helps with your SEO. That helps when they scrape, they grab more keywords from that. Um, also, make sure you have a catchy title. Use keywords in the title. Um, there is one website called CoSchedule that has a free blog title analyzer, and it will tell you whether your blog's too long, it's, the title's too long, the title's too short, um, good words to use, bad words to use, all of that. So um, I just pulled some examples of like formats that I know work. So this is from my, <laughs> my mom blog. Um, it sounds kind of embarrassing to say it. But this was um, titled, um, How to Potty Train Your Child in 36 Extremely Difficult Steps. Um, it's a list. I had my GIF up here of the DJing cats. Um, people GIF, GIF, whatever you call it. Um, people love those. Like, they're the best. Use as many as you can without going overboard. Um, this article ended up being picked up by Pop Sugar and Scary Mommy. Um, and that was a really good one just because people, they love, they love list. Um, this is um, one of the articles I wrote for the storage company I work for um, about the wonderful world of movable casework, um, which I know we're all thrilled to learn about. But as you can see, um, there are headings, you know, what is movable casework, why people are using movable casework. These are the types of headings with like about five sentences that you need to be using for people to be interested in what you're blogging about. Um, one thing about this site that I do not like whatsoever is this get in touch over here with the chat box, with the buy online store more store. That's too much. If people feel like you are like spamming them with ads and things like that, they're going to leave the site. So keep it simple. It's okay to have a get in touch, but not on like every single page and not that massive. Okay, tip number three. Okay, this is, I feel like this is the most important tip. Be consistent and schedule your post. So this is a big task to undertake when you start a business blog, but being consistent and scheduling your post will make it a lot easier. Um, at the beginning, you need to be um, doing one post per week, and you need to be posting on the same day each week at the same time. So say you post all of your blogs on Tuesday at 2 p.m. every week. 
or you do it on Friday at 7 p.m. every week. Um, just make sure that it is very consistent and that you're doing it every week because nothing is worse than looking at a company blog um, and looking for something in particular and there being like three blog posts from like four years ago. That's not a good look. Nobody likes that. It makes you look like you haven't taken the time. Like I would rather people take their blog um, link down than do that. Um, so at the beginning, don't commit to more than one post a week. It's going to take some time to get used to blogging. It's going to be a little bit clanky at the beginning. There are going to be some things that you have to work out, um, but that's okay. You'll figure it all out. It might take a little while, um, but yeah, just keep going. You'll figure it out. Um, so schedule your content for a month plus. So what I recommend my clients do is block out two hours a week for your blog. Um, don't do it like two hours before the blog's about to be posted because you might need um, more time. Um, do it like the day before or something like that. And in that two hours, you can spend that time writing, editing, and publishing the post and scheduling that post on when it's going to go live. Um, so you need to set this schedule um, with the categories you plan on blogging about. So I usually get, I still use like a big paper calendar with the months on it. Um, and for every month, like on Monday, every Monday I'll post about like hot products. Um, every, the second Monday of the month, you post about the business. You know, the third Monday, you post about a new product highlight. Fourth one, you talk about industry information. Um, so that way, when you go to sit down for your task to write this blog, you don't have to come up with some like idea like, oh my gosh, what am I going to write about? You have a topic that you have to write about. You just have to um, just go from there. And you can also bear, like go away from those categories if there's something different. Um, that you feel you want to talk to your customers about. And that's completely fine. Like I said, it's your blog and you can do it however you want. Um, these are just kind of some recommendations. And you don't have to have more than one post to start a blog. So don't be nervous about it. Like go ahead and just jump in and do it. Um, it seems pretty nerve wracking. There's never going to be like a perfect time to start something like this. So you just got to like jump in and do it. Tip number four, tell your story and the story of your business to engage your audience. So everybody loves a good story. Um, you might think the story of why you started your business is extremely boring, but I can guarantee you that there is someone that is extremely interested in your story and thinks it's like the best thing that they have ever heard. Um, you want to, you know, when you do tell your story and talk about your business, you want to add photos, add photos of yourself. People want to put a face with the name. This is kind of helping you continuing with creating your brand. Um, you can talk about, you know, why you're doing this, you know, why this business is what you're passionate about. Um, it's also a really good place to celebrate your business, um, to share things that um, awards you might have won or goals that you set. Um, it's a good time to like put that out there. It's not being, you know, boastful or anything. It's just saying, hey, like we do a good job and we want to show you um, the recognition that we received for doing a good job um, and always like consumer reviews are the best two to put up there. Um, so this is also where you can position yourself as an industry expert. So say you're doing your storage shop and you're selling filing cabinets. Um, you might think that you're not an industry expert but I can guarantee you that you know 99% more about storage and filing cabinets than most people that are going to be reading your blog post. So 
Um, even if you're like nervous and you're like, oh, I'm not an industry expert, like fake it till you make it. Um, just put it out there, be confident in yourself and just realize that you do know a lot more than most people um, do about the storage industry. Well, you don't know about the storage industry, but whatever your industry is, um, it shows people that you're qualified to run this business and you're qualified to make it successful. You wanna talk about the mission and the vision for your business. Um, people love seeing like, I do this because of, I don't know. I do this because years ago, someone told me that I was going to be great at selling office cabinets. And now my dream has come true. And in the future, I wanna sell like the Megaplex 4000 filing cabinet. That's my vision for the business to work towards. Um, and like, that sounds super boring. I know, but people, people will read this. I promise. Um, and also highlight community service and employees that go above and beyond. Um, some people think that posting about volunteer work is a little bit of like a bragging way to do things. Um, and you might feel that way and that's completely okay. I know some people are like that. I'm a true believer that putting stuff up like that, obviously don't do something just for the social media, but if you're going to be doing this anyway, snap a photo um, and talk about it. Like that's part of your mission. That's part of your business. Um, that's part of what you do every single day. And so your customers need to see that. Um, I always say like novelty size checks were invented because in the pictures on a novelty size check, you can see how much money the business is giving away. Um, but if you are the like only employee, obviously you can't post much about like employee of the month, unless you wanna be your own employee of the month, then good for you, good job. Um, really in the end, you wanna get your customers and your potential customers to like you. Um, people are easily swayed by people that they trust, um, people that they like. Um, you obviously have to deliver um, but people tend, I mean, they tend to purchase more from people that they like. Um, I wouldn't go into like politics or anything like that, but you can write about whatever you want. Not much is off limits. Like you can write about getting engaged at the Grand Canyon and how your ring was beautiful. And it reminds you of this, always, always tie a product to it. It reminds you of this um, photo storage portfolio that you would love to get so you can always remember the memories of your engagement in the Grand Canyon. Um, I mean, you can pretty much talk about everything. People, random stories, people will love it. It's crazy the things that you can write about that people will read. Um, tip number five, showcase your products and services. This is kind of an obvious one, um, but what you don't realize about a blog is that you can make an entire blog post about one product. Um, if you want to write an entire blog post about your favorite filing cabinet, like do it to it. This is what I do, this is part of my job. I write these blog posts about different sorts of storage um, and I put the features and the benefits and um, where you need to go to get this and a call to action. Um, and I mean, if you have 10, only 10 products or only two services, I mean, I don't care. You can write about part of the service and then write about the other part. You can break things down into smaller pieces and make an entire blog post out of each small piece. Um, one thing to remember in blog posts, don't put the pricing of the product or the service in the text of the article. Instead, you want to link um, to say like, oh, and this filing cabinet is a great price and then link that to the product page with the filing cabinet on it. Um, if you put pricing in the actual text, that ages and old prices usually don't age well for businesses. 
um, and things are usually maybe a little bit more expensive. Um, so don't put that in there. You'll have people coming back and arguing that this is what the price was. Um, it just saves you a lot of trouble. And um, it also gives you negative points in the Googleverse. Um, if you put pricing in your article, that's just something that they don't see because if they can see that you click the link and it's a different um, price, not good, negative points. Okay, tip number six always include a call to action. Um, a call to action is links to your contact pages, your phone number, your email address, a click to chat. What do you want the person to do um, when they get to the end of this blog? Do you want them to purchase something linked to that product? Do you want them to call you and set up um, a consultation? Then have that click to phone number. Also, Speaking of that, make sure that your web pages are mobile friendly. Always look at your web pages on a cell phone because most people are looking at um, this content on a cell phone. Um, so if it is just looks crazy on a cell phone and you have to like um, zoom in or zoom out or whatever to be even be able to read it, that's not good. Make it as easy to read as humanly possible. And make buying from you as easily as easy as humanly possible. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to buying things online. Um, if they're like, if I'm making this order and I'm checking out and they're like, put in your credit card number, which I don't have memorized um, yet, but um, I'm like, oh, I have to like get up from my seat and go get a credit card. That's too much trouble. If you can do like a one click to pay or something like that, if you can save their information on your site with their credit cards, obviously safely, if you can do PayPal, that's great. One click, people like to purchase in one click. It just makes things easier and it, your conversion rates will be higher. Um, here is an example of, um, a good call to action. It's another extremely interesting article I wrote about vertical material lifts. Um, but here you can see, talks a little bit about the business. We'll provide you with a free consultation to determine your specifications before design process begins. To speak with a specialist, they have the phone number, which hopefully whenever you bring that up on mobile, uh, you could click to call or send us a message today and you can click to send a message. So that is a good call to action. Tip number seven, borrow ideas and get inspiration from a blog you like. Don't recreate the wheel. There is so much content out there. This is not stealing content. Do not steal content. That's just the worst. But think about a business in your industry that you aspire to be like, um, that you really think is like doing things really well and they're growing and they're getting all of these customers and you think that you have the same target market. Look at what they're blogging about. Look at the type of content that they're putting up. Um, and you can use that as inspiration for some of your new content. Um, like I said, it's not stealing. It's just, you know, getting inspiration um, and who better to get inspiration from than someone like or a business that you aspire to be like. There's also something called um, evergreen content. So that is a post that say you previously posted that did really, really well. And every time you reshare it, it does really, really well. Like this is your most popular post. That's considered evergreen content it never goes bad. So you, like if your views are in a slump, bam, post that evergreen content and you'll see your views go back up. So tip eight, make sure you post blogs on social media, media and send out to your email subscribers. I feel like that's kind of a, another one that's like, duh, but don't let your blog just sit on your website and gather dust. You really have to put it out there. Um, social media is really the best way, obviously, to get it out into the world. Um, when you're posting a blog to social media, 
don't just post the link and let the little like link photo come up. Um, that does not look good and it's not very appealing to the eye. You want to put like a snippet of what you wrote about in the post um, or a little bit explaining about the post, maybe like three or four sentences. Um, and then you want to obviously put the link to the post, but then add a photo, um, add something. If it's a photo, if this is, you're writing about a product, then add a photo of a product to your social post. Um, one thing that you can do is use Canva, canva.com, it's free, um, to put together images um, and they give you templates for the images. I always use Instagram sized images because they can be used for Instagram and Facebook. Um, but it's super user friendly. You can put text on it. You can change the background. You can put photos of the top 10 hottest filing cabinets of 2022. And you can put pictures of all these filing cabinets. Um, it's a really good um, way to create blog images that are going to drive people in um, to click on that blog. All right, tip number nine, I need to speed up a little bit. Categorize the post you blog about. Um, so like I said earlier, when you're scheduling your content, do it with those um, four categories. Um, so on your blog, when they click on your blog link, they should be able to um, first see the different categories of posts that you write about. Um, so if this person is only interested in learning industry information that they can click that and they can find every single post about industry information um, and they can read as much as they want. Um, it makes it easy for your customer to read about what they're interested in um, and it's also really good for SEO um, because it's just another level where you have keywords and the more keywords the better. Um, this also helps get um, old post, uh, old post traffic. Tip number 10, make sure the content is useful to the consumer. Um, you want to create content that your target market wants to see. And I mean, how do you do this? You, you ask them, like go onto your social and um, do one of those Instagram polls that they have. I'm asking, would you rather learn about the business or would you rather learn about industry information? Would you rather learn about filing cabinets or movable casework? Would you rather, you know, hear about this or that? Um, you can send a survey. You can have a call to action on one of your posts to be, hey, email me at this email address that you can click on right now that'll bring up my email and tell me um, what you want to hear about. Um, another thing you can do is read your company FAQs for inspiration. Like what are some of the questions that people ask most about your business? Go ahead and tackle that and just do a whole blog post about it. Um, people will love it. And obviously look at the other blog that's similar to yours that you kind of want to be like um, and get some inspiration from that. Okay, we're on to my bonus tips. Bonus tip. Stick with the same voice throughout the blog. I know that it's easier to split up like, hey, you write this blog post this week, I'll write this one next week, and then we'll alternate weeks or we'll have four different people writing the post. It's better for the same person to write all the posts than they have the same um, point of view and the same voice. People tend to write like their personalities. Um, so it really takes a lot of editing to take a blog article from two different people and edit it so it has the same voice. Um, if you keep a voice, this will help gain repeat readers. Um, this was kind of good for me when I did my blog. I was kind of known as being a little bit humorous, but super realistic about what it's like to be a parent. Um, and viewers really like, they loved that. Um, and that's kind of was my voice of my blog. Um, so it's a really important to establish that voice. Tip number two, we're gonna talk about backlinks. Backlinks are super important for SEO. 
So this is when you try to get another page or another business blog to link to your site or blog posts. So let's say for my storage company, let's call them storage and stuff. Um, I'm going to pair up with a complementary business, um, like a professional organizer. And on that organizer's blog, she's going to write about why she loves this um, filing cabinet that I have and why it's the best filing cabinet and I sell it. And she is going to link to my website. So when your link appears on someone else's website, it's considered a backlink. So work with these other complimentary businesses and ask them to post links to your business in their sites. Obviously, you can't do it if it's like a direct competitor or someone, but do someone complimentary that you can work with. Helps with SEO, helps with Google rankings. Another way to get more eyes on your posts is to submit them to trade journals or industry associations. Um, they love republishing content. Um, I did a lot of this. One of my articles that I wrote was very like HR related. I, I wrote a lot about being like a full-time working mom with young kids. Um, and there was one article that I did that um, I ended up sending to like the HR industry association and they used it on their website. Um, so say that you are doing storage. Look, it's the self storage association. If you're into self storage and not just regular storage. Um, and these are like their posts that they're writing about, you know, on the self storage facility have roof leaks, you know, we'll talk about the repair options. Um, this is, shows um, that they post about good things about their industry, but they also post about things that are good content that's gonna be useful to their reader. Um, because I'm sure a lot of people are Googling like how to fix my roof um, after it rains or something like that. That sounds like it would be a big problem. Um, and I mean, look how many times these have been viewed. This one about U-Haul wanting self-storage and density development got a thousand views on the self-storage association website. That's a lot. You can get a lot of views on websites like this. So find the association or whatever for your industry. Bonus tip number three, make sure you have a good meta description. Like what is a meta description? It's gonna be the summary of your blog. And keywords have to be included in the meta description. It's, it can be about two sentences, depending on how long they are. It's, it's done by a certain amount of characters, um, but this is like the preview that shows up after your site is listed on Google. So here's a good, like, okay, so this is Southwest Solutions. This is the company that I work for. Um, Southwest Solutions Group is a premier solutions oriented company, blah, blah, blah. Transformational efficiency storage systems. Fancy. So um, this is a great meta description. Um, so this is obviously what your meta description is. If you don't put a meta description in there, they're going to use the first text that they get um, at the beginning of your blog. And you don't want it to be like Southwest Solutions, like in your meta say this one time when I was getting engaged in the Grand Canyon, it's not gonna sound good. So make sure that you're always filling out your meta description. So really have fun with it. If this is a business that you are passionate about, um, then you should have a good time writing these posts. You should be excited to write about, you know, stuff that you're passionate about. And you'll probably have a lot of really good ideas about things that you want to write about. Um, if you think that blogging is the worst thing in the entire world and you would rather stick a fork in your eye than blog, you can hire a content writer to write your posts for you. Um, you can find them everywhere. There are a ton of them. Um, and yeah. Blogging really can be fun. I promise I did it for, I mean, I blogged for a long time. Now I'm doing content writing for a long time. I can't say I'm super passionate about writing blog posts about um, storage cabinets, but um, a piece. So um, next, 
my contact information, you know, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions um, or if you need help with your business blog, I'd be happy to help. Um, the best way to get a hold of me is through email. I'm usually either um, in meetings or on the phone with people. Um, so you email's the best, or if you call, leave a voicemail and I'll call you back as soon as I can. Um, so yeah, does anyone, do we have any questions? Uh, first, Jamie, just want to thank you so much. This was super helpful, um, informative, and also funny. Um, my, oh, yeah, I, the, the top 10 hottest filing cabinets of 2021 is really something that I would like to to check out. I'd never had such an interest in filing cabinets until you talk yeah. about it that way. So I do think it's a valuable thing that's like, you can find a way to make something that seems like it might not be super exciting or, you know, interesting. You, you, you can find a way to add humor and, and interest to it and that that can really help to grow the business. So I think it's important to think of it as something that's accessible, as a marketing tool that's accessible to all different kinds of products and services, not just sort of the classic ones that you would think of. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, super, super appreciate. This has been really, really valuable. Um, and we do have a good number of questions. So I'm gonna just, I can kind of just jump in here. So there were two people who actually asked this one question from earlier in the presentation. You mentioned a title analysis tool. Um, and can you give us the name or any more specifics about where to where somebody would find that? It's co-schedule. I think it's dot com. Okay. Um, you can Google co-schedule and it should pop up um, with those tools. I can stop. Is it C O schedule? C O schedule. Okay, I'll put that in the chat. Um, oh, perfect, Janet's already on it. This is why she's the best. Awesome. Um, okay, great. And then I guess any other, is it a free tool? Is it something you have to pay for? What's the parameters around it? It's a free tool. Um, I do think that they have a paid version. Um, so when you do it in the free tool, it'll say, you know, this is, um, a certain percentage of good, good title. Um, and you want to be at least 70%. Like if you get like a 50%, your title could be better. Like you want to stay around 70 or above, obviously. Um, but yeah, you just put it in there and they'll say like, these are good words. These are bad words. And here's some extra words that you can use, like some synonyms that you can use. Then they have like premium locked words. They have like, these are the power words that you could use, but you have to have like premium for those. But it's a really good tool still. The free version is a great tool. Okay, very, yeah, that's excellent. Um, one question from Narissa who says, I'm just learning, I would like to go back and fix some SEO, meaning rename and fix descriptions for photos. Is it okay to edit after a post has already been published? And that's a good question. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts there? Yes, um, what I would do is just remove the photo from the blog, um, rename it, save it on your computer, re-upload it with the new name, put the description in, um, and republish the content. So it is possible, people do this all the time. Um, some people wait to do all their SEO in like one day and they'll go back to all their blog posts from like the last month or whatever, and they'll put their SEO in, which actually is not a very good idea. You want to do it at the beginning, but you can go back and do it if you realize there's stuff that you missed. Okay. Um, I've, this, I, I don't know, I'm kind of imagining in my head some sort of like checklist as far as like things to make sure that you're hitting as you're, you know, beyond just the writing of the content. So it is that, that analysis, it's the strong title, it's these kinds of things with the names and the pictures. Is there like, is that something that you have or is there a website that you think would kind of give some of those things or maybe just like something that we could, you know, make within the SBC? Yeah, it's probably something that I could put together. Um, for sure. Yeah, it's not something that's really out there. Um, this is just like a mishmash of all the information I've learned over the last five years. So yeah, I could definitely put something together though. I think that'd be useful. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and I, and this is something that kind of diverting from some of these questions, but something that I had thought about as you were talking is I know with SEO and these particular keyword trends that that stuff changes pretty regularly. So, you know, in the sense of like, if you were to make some kind of list, it might be that after three months or nine months, something you, you, you were missing something that was actually really important. So mm -hmm. I guess, do you have is there a particular source that you try to look at consistently for information on what are some of the trends in how SEO works? Or is that like hire a company if, you, if this is really important to your business? Like, do you, yeah, do you have any suggestions on that? Yeah, there are a lot of like Facebook groups out there about blogging. Um, you can probably search Facebook, try and find something about business blogging and there will probably be groups that you can join and these people share um, a lot of information about how they do the SEO and it gives you kind of updates on the newest things because you know Google and Facebook and they're always changing their algorithm algorithms and how things work um, so it's kind of good to stay in those groups um, so you can kind of learn about the newest things they're usually like led by um, a content writer or a blogger or something like that. Okay. So to just kind of go on Facebook and type in like blogging group, mm -hmm. you know, for, would you say like for a particular industry or just in general, like blogging groups? I would start with like business blogging, depending on your industry, there might be one for your industry, depending on how like big or small it is. Um, but Facebook groups are good. And then just looking through post just Google it and look at posts, make sure that they're recent, make sure you're checking the date on them. Um, but that's another good way. Okay. Um, so Lisa asks a question from towards the end of the presentation, um, as far as submitting the blog once it's written to, I, th I think her question and Lisa maybe give us more information um, if, you, if you didn't get it in the presentation, but you're clarifying who would you be submitting the blog to? I think it was like something to do with the other industry experts or the you know kind of associations to do with that particular industry. Um, but maybe clarify your question a little bit more, Lisa. If not, um, Jamie, do you have any other details on and who specifically you'd be submitting to? Yeah, I say look for trade associations. So I would look for like the storage association of the you know, United States. Um, and then they normally have an email address of someone you can get in contact with. And like, it, even if they don't say send us blogs or whatever, totally be a creeper, just send them an email and be like, hey, I'd be really interested in you using my blog on the site. You know, I think it's great for these reasons. And half of the time, or probably 75% of the time, they're going to say yes, because it helps them they don't have to, you know, work on generating as much content. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Um, then we've got a question from our friend Kevin Yates. He says, what is the best way to grow traffic with a brand new blog? So kind of how do you get traction when you're just getting started? Mm -hmm. That's really, you know, it's difficult and you have to start from the bottom and just grow it from there. Um, make sure that you put it on your social, make sure you're sending it out in your, um, like if you do a monthly newsletter, um, make sure that you send it out in that. Put this blog in as many places as you can um, and just push it out from there. And it's really once you get um, a lot of posts like on your site and Google really gets a good idea of what you're writing about and your keywords that you get up further in the Google rankings. So at first you might get like, you might have four people read your blog and you're like, oh my gosh, this isn't worth it. You know, why am I doing this? Keep going, like post consistently and you will get the traffic. It just might take a little time. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna start somewhere. It's, yeah, it certainly isn't up a battle. Um, uh, Joan says, I'm so glad you added meta descriptions. I think we are at a loss on that. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if you had other questions about that, Joan, feel free to drop those in if you did. Um, and then Lisa says she would be interested in the information, I think, about that list that I was saying as far as the kind of different things to check off as you're, as you're composing the, 
the particular post. Um, then I guess, Jamie, I'll give you a sh just a shameless plug to let everybody know that in addition to all of this blogging specific information, you you know also as working as a, as a business coach in the Owensboro Center that you're doing all different kinds of things to help businesses get started and get funded. Um, so anybody who's on here who you know would like to, to reach out to Jamie, her, her email is there. For, for everybody to kind of write down and, and, and reach out. Um, but I think it's cool that you've had this experience in, in starting from zero and going and, and, and getting some traction in the market because it is, it certainly is a thing that is kind of, you know, you have to have a lot of energy behind it and really kind of stick with that goal of carving out the time every week to, to continue to create stuff and move it forward. Um, so, oh, okay, Joan clarified. She says, I was just saying, I'm not sure how we have concentrated on our on on their own meta description so yeah something to go into your own particular site and and do some analysis for um yeah so if anybody else has any other questions drop those in the chat um and then we will be sending out the replay of this for everybody who had signed up for it later on today as well as that survey that i had mentioned earlier so kind of be on the lookout um, for that. But then, Jamie, do you have any sort of closing words for us today as we are hitting at the top of the hour? Um, like I said earlier, just jump in and start. Just do it. Don't wait. It's one of those things that you're going to put off forever. Um, just do it. Yeah. And if you have any questions about getting things started, um, let me know. I'm happy to help and share as much information as I can. All right. Well, thank you so much. We, yeah, we really appreciate you taking the time um, to come here and share your experience and, and all these super helpful tips. So this has been great. Um, yeah. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.